Qaydu here it means originally the word Qayd comes from the, the rope that is placed on the camel when you do not want it to go or the horse. Yeah? That is called in Arabic what? It's called Qayd. Like Abu Bakr, what did he say? Wallahi law mana'uni iqalan. The rope tying it to the camel is qayd. And that rope is called the iqal. Wallahi, if they refuse to give me that iqal, which they tie their camel with, I will fight with them for it. Huh? So qayd means to tie. Here what he's trying to say is, I'm going to tie words with one another. Meaning I'm going to write. Huh? See how many benefits that is in the word uqayyidu, but in English you just say I write. But it has more meaning than that, right? For uqayyidu. Every time amma ba'du is used, you will realize what comes after it, there's always going to be a fat there, because this is the jawab. It's always the jawab of sharq, I mean the jawab of the jumla. Are you with me? Amma ba'du, fat comes after it. For uqayyidu, I'm going to write. Ma'alima hadi al hiliyat al mubaraka. I'm going to write. The Shaykh said, I'm going to write these hilya. Hilya means that which a person beautifies himself with. So the Shaykh is trying to refer to his book as something that a person can beautify himself with. Al Mubarakati, that is blessed. This hilya, which is blessed. And the year that the Shaykh said he wrote it is what? Ama, the year is Alf Rabu'amia wa Thamani Hijriya. And look how we read the word, the, the year in Arabic. We read it like just all of it like that. So what do we say? We say, uh, sorry, we say, Thamaniya wa arba'umia wa elf. We read it like this, like it's Arabic. Hijriya. Wal muslimuna wa lillahi alhamdu yu'ayishuna yaqadatan ilmiyatan tatahallalu laha subuhatil wujuh. Wal muslimuna the Muslims. Wa lillahi alhamdu praises to Allah. Yu'ayishuna, they are living Yaqadatan ilmiya an Islamic awakening. Praises to Allah that the Muslims are right now, they're living in an Islamic awakening. The Muslims are waking up. Tatahallalu laha subuhatil wujuh. That it glows. Kalimatu tatahallalu means to glow. Subuhatil wujuh. The word subuhat, two meanings are in it. The word subuhat has two meanings. The first means the brightness that comes from a person's face when it glows. Or the word subuhat can mean when a person smiles, the wrinkles that comes on his, on his face is called a... It's called subuhat. So, the Muslims are now in an awakening. They're waking up. This awakening is a knowledge-based awakening. People are waking up. They're realizing the importance of knowledge. And they are going out of their ways to study. Universities are getting filled. Masajids, people are starting to memorize the Quran, etc. That which the faces of the people glows out of happiness of what they're seeing. This is what the Shaykh is trying to, he's trying to say. And it does not remain except to that it gives enthusiasm. The Shaykh said. It does not remain for it to give enthusiasm. And what is it that is given to uh, enthusiasm to? Is that it's making the people grow. Taraqi means when a person is at one level, it's when you climb a staircase, your first level, then you go on the second, and then you go growing. And nuduj is when the, it blossoms. The people are still continuous on that, in which they are what? They're growing in this awakening. They're growing and they're blossoming. This is what he's saying. Fi afida. Hey, fadl al-bab. Let somebody open the door for him, inshallah. Fi afida ti shabab al-ummati majdaha wa damaha al-mujadid li-hayatiha. The Sheikh said that which the blossoming and the glowing and the growing that is being seen, it's taking place. What? في أفئدة شباب الأمة in the hearts of the youngsters, the youth, in the hearts of the youngsters, youth, uh, the youth's heart, and bringing back for the Muslims what مجدها its honor, the fact that the Muslims are waking it up right now and they're learning their religion and they want to learn. The Sheikh said this is something that the youngsters are doing it. 
It is bringing back what? Bringing back the honor for the Muslims. إِذْ نَرَى as we see الْكَتَائِبُ الشَّبَابِيَّةِ تَتْرَى We see the word kataib is what's used for the battlefield. In the battle, huh? what's the army called? The first the portion who go out to fight and they go and the first and is called the kataib. And the singular is katiba. The shaykh is trying to say a group of youngsters that keep going and another one comes after. It just keeps going on. Tatra, one after the other. يَتَقَلَّبُونَ فِي أَعْطَافِ الْعِلْمِ And they are what? They are, the word يَتَقَلَّبُونَ as, as a benefit, the word نَرَى in Arabic. Arabic language, it's a verb that takes two مفعول به. يَتَعَدَّ إِلَى مفعولين. It moves over to two verbs, uh, two sub-objects, two مفعول به. The first one is تَطْلَى and the second one is يَتَقَلَّبُونَ. The second one is يَتَقَلَّبُونَ. يَتَقَلَّبُونَ They are tossing and turning these, the youngsters who are going out who are learning the religion, they are turning and they are going through what? They're going through fi a'tafil ilm. They're going to the corners of knowledge, wherever it is. If they can find it in the corner, they're going to seek it and they're going after it. Muthqilina bi hamli. And they are also being what? They're becoming heavy and overloaded by carrying it. Ya'ulluna minhu wa yanhaluna. And they keep coming back for it. The word ya'ulluna, it means when the camel is taken and it's told to drink from somewhere and again it's made to drink from the same place again and again it's called ya'ulluna. وَيَنْهَلُونَ in the other is the first time it drinks from it. Meaning they keep coming to this ocean or this well which is knowledge and they keep drinking from it and they take from it. One after the other, they keep doing it. The ship wants to say something now. The terms are hard, but I want you to understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to say, Rahimahullah, that even that though the Muslims are out now, awake, and they realize the importance of seeking knowledge, and they have the aspiration, the Shaykh is trying to say that this book is going to play a role. And the role that this book is going to play is that aspiration and that wanting to learn and that striving, it needs two things. The first thing, it needs manhajiyya, a methodology to seek knowledge. And that, isn't that a question that a lot of people ask? I want to seek knowledge. Where should I start from? This book is going to give you that. Also, the manners and the etiquettes that a student of knowledge needs to adorn himself with and that he should have, this book is also going to govern him. So we can't just let you have that high aspiration and that drive and that want to seek knowledge except there has to be some form of supervision. So this is what he's trying to say so you guys don't uh, find it hard. فَلَدَيْهِمْ مِنَ الطُّمُوحِ and so the youngsters and the youth, they now have ambition. Tumuh means ambitions. They have the ambition. Well, jami'iyyah, and they have the academic understanding, meaning they have compiled a lot of knowledge. Well, mudhishu, and they also have a high level of reading. Ittila' means when a person reads and reads and reads. Al mudhishu, mudhish is something that mind boggles, that amazes you. You see, وَالْغَوْصُ عَلَى مَكْنُونَاتِ الْمَسَائِلِ And diving into deeply rooted matters of the religion. Not just surface level. Youngsters are now going into deep issues of the religion and they're learning it. So the Sheikh is trying to give us a good glad tidings. Huh? And Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, he said, مَا ذَكَرَهُ الْمُؤَلِّفُ صَحِيحٌ that which the author mentioned, Ibn Uthaymeen is saying, what Bakr Abu Zayd said is true. فَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآوِنَةِ الْأَخِيرَةِ Because this now time that we're living in, حَصَلَ وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ It has happened with the praise of Allah. مِنَ الشَّبَابِ From the youngsters, طُمُحَاتٌ وَاسِعَةٌ فِي شَتَّ الْمَجَالَاتِ There has come from the youngsters and the youth, what? There has come from this ambition and this drive in different fields of the religion. MashaAllah. So, it is true. As Ibn Uthaymeen said and Shaykh Bakr Abu Zayd. Then the Shaykh said, مَا يَفْرَحُ بِهِ الْمُسْلِمُونَ نَصَلًا And this taking place brings happiness to the Muslims that victory is close. Because how does a nation gain victory? Is as Allah said in the ayah, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ The Mufassirin they say, 
هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى هدى من زوات العلم النافع beneficial knowledge ودين الحق means righteous actions عمل الصالح a nation who wants to gain victory they have to have with themselves beneficial knowledge and they also need to have with them what righteous actions this knowledge that you've gained has to manifest on your limbs it has to show on you huh? so the Sheikh Rahimahullah is saying this being seen that people want to learn and they have that hunger for knowledge ما يفرح به مسلمون نصر this is victory فسبحان exalted the word سبحان wherever you really see it as a benefit take this it's a مزدر just like the word غفران the word سبحان is a مزدر is a verbal noun is a verbal noun فسبحان exalted is he Allah من يحيي ويميت قلوبا he gives life and death to the heart. He's given life to the youngsters who are waking up, who want to learn their religion, and others, they don't have that, so their hearts are dead. The Sheikh now, he told us, what, what is it that's out there now? He's going to now tell you why, he, what, what, what role he plays in this situation of the youngsters running after knowledge and wanting to learn. Lakin, however, لا بد it is necessary لهذه النوات these seeds so look what the sheikh is doing he's trying to do a comparison between a, a, a garden once you've taken the seed and you've planted it into the garden what do you take? you take water and you what? you water it right? and what does it also require? it also requires supervision from what? what do you supervise your garden from? that there may grow other flowers that are going to use the nutrition with it but that's going to be very harmful صحيح. and the student of knowledge that has, that's what he has to be protected from he has to be watered correctly with the correct knowledge and he also has to be protected from those individuals who are going to try to be in the mists who are re in reality what? they're not true and they're going to harm them and their religion, or the way they come across, or the way they show themselves, they are not people of knowledge. And they have no understanding of the religion of Allah, and the Shaykh is going to mention that, Rahimahullah. So he said, Lakin, but, however, لا بد لهذه النوات المباركة من السقي والتعهد It needs two things. It needs watering, and it also needs التعهد Supervision. Someone who supervises this young boy, who wants to learn the religion, who has the aspiration, what does he require? Somebody who's going to water him correctly, one. And secondly, somebody who's going to supervise him. في مساراتي, في مساراتها كافة. In all of his what? In all through his journey, he needs somebody to supervise him. And he also needs somebody who's going to correctly water him. نشرا للضمانات التي تكف عن أنهث العثارة والتعثرة في, من في مثاني الطلب والعمل. And that extends safeguarding and protect from him any slip of the tongue or also even stumbling. He's going to be safeguarded from what? Al-Hafawat. Shortcomings that might come from his tongue. The word Al-Athara, what ta'athur? The translation doesn't even explain. The translations that are out there do not tell the difference between the two in English. And the difference between the two is one is speaking about the stumbling or the mistake that comes from the person's mouth and the other one is talking about when the person physically stumbles there's going to be that scholar who's going to correctly look after the student supervise him, watch him you see and then the sheikh said who's also in the midst of his seeking his knowledge and his actions somebody who's supervising him from what? what does he have to be supervised from? The Sheikh says, Commotions. What commotions? Intellectual commotions. Fikriyatin. Intellectual commotion. Wa'akadiyatin. Ideological commotions. See? Three. Wasulukiya. Behavior. The behavior of the student. He's going to be, that also is going to be looked at. Wata'ifiya. Ta'ifiyya is, is it divisional? Naam. And the last one which is Hizbiyya, partinism. All of that, 
the scholar is going to make sure that he doesn't fall into any of those commotions and those mistakes and those shortcomings. وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُ I have made طَوْعَ أَيْدِيهِ بِرِسَالَةً I have placed in the disposal of these youngsters and the people who want to seek knowledge in your disposal, the Sheikh said, I have placed this book. But before that, the Sheikh mentions, وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُ طَوْعَ أَيْدِيهِ بِرِسَالَةً فِي التَّعَالُومِ I have written in the disposal of the student of knowledge a book called at taalum I forgot to bring it today. And inshallah ta'ala, when we finish this book, bi-idhnillahi al if we do uh, finish it, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go for the next book, which is at taalum written by him himself. And that, what does that book to deal with? It deals with pseudo-scholars, people who pretend to be scholars, who show themselves to be scholars, but they are what? at taalum pretend to be scholars. It's a good book to read. So the Sheikh said, I've placed that book for them as well. Takshifu uh, that exposes al mundasina those who hide within knowledge, who are faking it. The Sheikh said, I wrote a book on that to expose them. If you want to know people who are fake about seeking knowledge and they're not people of knowledge and they have no knowledge, not from a close place nor from a far place, that book Sheikh Bakr, wallahi, read it. At ta'an. And I advise you, has, has it been translated? That book is amazing. It talks about people who pretend to be people of knowledge, who present themselves, huh? Because nowadays, the, the you know, Al-Allam, Mufti, uh, uh, these names, uh, Imam, and etc., they've become very common. Are you with me? So these terms have now, they've been watered down. So the person has to know what is knowledge and who is carrying it. So here, it's important. The Sheikh said, تَكْشِفُ الْمُنْدَسِينَ بَيْنَهُمْ خَشْيَةَ أَنْ يُرْدُوهُمْ فِيَا That they may what? Destruct them. The reason why I wrote that book, Ta'alum, is so they can know who the one who is faking it and claiming that he's got knowledge, the student can know and be aware of it. So he doesn't get, he doesn't fall into destruction. وَيُضَيِّعُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَمْرَهُمْ And that they do not cause harm to your affairs. وَيُبَعْثِرُوا مَسِيرَتَهُمْ And they separate you from your path in seeking knowledge. You with me? فَيَسْتَلُّونَ وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they pull them from that path and the youngster, the youth who is seeking knowledge doesn't really know. He gets fooled. The Sheikh said, I protect, I made sure, I wrote, I wrote a book so the person can know who is the one he needs to take knowledge from and who he should not. So now we learn that the book at taalum is before Hilya to Talib al It was before it. وَالْيَوْمَ أَخُوكَ يَشُدُّ عَضُدَكَ وَيَأْخُذُ بِيَدِكَ فَجْعَلْ فَيَجْعَلُ طَوْعَ بَنَانِكَ رِسَالَةً تَحْمِلُ الصِّفَةَ الْكَاشِفَةَ The Sheikh said, وَالْيَوْمَ تَدَيْ أَخُوكَ your brother Referring to who? Himself. وَالْيَوْمَ تَدَيْ أَخُوكَ your brother يَشُدُّ عَضُدَكَ He is strengthening you. And what is he also doing? وَيَأْخُذُ بِيَدِكَ He's taking you by your hand. فَأَجْعَلُ طَوْعَ بَنَانِكَ I am placing in the disposal of your fingertip. Where is the fingertip? There it is. رِسَالَةً أَيْ بُكْ تَحْمِلُ صِفَّةَ الْكَاشِفَةَ أَيْ رِسَالَةً That explain صِفَةَ الْكَاشِفَةَ Explaining that might take too much details because Usuliyin, they talk about it pages after pages. But let me sum it up for you. Let me, let me try to summarize it for you. Sifatun kashifa, the sifa is divided into two. Sifa kashifa and sifa muqayyada. Sifa kashifa means Surah Al-Fatiha, we all read. Allah says, Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeen. Are you with me? Is there a path that is not mustaqeen? Ibn, Ibn al-Qayyim says, nope, there isn't. The word sirat, it means that it's straight. That's what a path is, it's straight. Sirat means something that is straight and it's wasa. So why is mustaqim used here? Why is mustaqim used? Sifa kashifa means it's a description that does not have any reverse understanding you can't take it out from it. Laysa lahum Are you with me? When Allah spoke about the Jews, what did he say? يَقْتُلُونَ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرِ حق. They will kill the prophets without any haq, right? Is there a time when you can kill the Prophet and it's hack to kill him? So why describe it like this? 
ها ويقتلون الانبياء اما ويقتلون النبيين بغير حق they will kill the prophets with حق uh, بغير حق without no حق so does that so can we say the مفهوم is there are times when it's حق to kill the prophets ya yeah. ajibu reply no why this is not called sifa muqayyada it's called sifa kashifa means wahum ya'lamuna they know that it's not haq to kill the prophet sah this is called sifa kashifa some sifa there is a mafhum you can understand the opposite from it for example if i say ha ahmed is tall the opposite is what there are short brothers out here sah that's called sifa muqayyada 